Good morning, ma'am. Good morning, ma'am. Ah, uh, yes, ma'am. We can start the session. Uh, good morning, everyone. Good morning, all. Um, it's indeed a great pleasure for me to uh, present uh, this course, uh, stru uh, Steel Structures. I thank uh, Dr. Komuda, HOD of Civil Engineering, and uh, Mrs. Ruby. And I thank my CEO, uh, Mr. C.B. Jacob, for giving this uh, opportunity. Uh, let's uh, move on to the session. Please finish that. Yes, right. Uh, Ruby, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. It's yes, ma'am. Is it visible, right? Uh, audio is also everything is good, right? Shall I proceed? So this uh, steel structures, so in civil engineering, based on the functions and based on the requirements and based on the utility, we are uh, dealing with uh, different types of uh, structures, right? Based on the material, we'll be having concrete structures, steel structures, residential, commercial, so based on functions and all. So why we are going to uh, have a knowledge on steel structures as a civil engineer? So steel is one of the very good, friendly uh, construction material. It's being employed uh, uh, wide over the world. Right? So what are the advantages of your steel structures over concrete structures? We need to know that. So only uh, we know the defect or we know the negative side of your concrete where you can employ steel structure. So concrete structure is very... Uh, uh, user friendly, but it is composed of your uh, cement, sand, coarse aggregate, and water and all. If any quality of any one of the material will be missing, then your total quality of concrete will be affected. But in case of steel, your the, it is a very homogeneous material. Only one thing that is steel alone is there, right? So if you maintain the quality of steel, you can maintain the uh, quality of your structure. So this is one of the advantage of your steel uh, structure over concrete structures. So apart from that, we do have a better quality control. That is, if you maintain the quality of your steel material, you can maintain the quality of your structure. And compared to your concrete, uh, you'll be having a very less uh, sulfite of your steel structure. In concrete, your dead weight or the sulfite will be one minute. Sorry for the interruption. Yeah. In concrete, your uh, uh, dead weight will be more compared to your steel structures. So, the steel, you can have a lightweight steel structures based on your advancement in a recent days. And for uh, erecting a concrete structure or for constructing a concrete structure, we do need uh, shattering, uh, bar bending, and uh, ready mixed concrete should be available. Right? But in case of steel, from your uh, erect at the site. So you, we can do the faster erection. So shuttering means we need to, it, it will take two days of time for proper shuttering and for uh, reinforcement placing it will take another two days and for concreting it will take a one day, that two, uh, two to three hours. And after that for de-shuttering we need to wait not less than 14 days. So for floor to be ready, getting ready, we need to wait for more than 21 days. But in case of steel structure, <clears throat> if you are importing from your uh, um, uh, in the, uh, factory, 
within a day you can erect and within 24 hours you can make use of the structure so faster erection and faster utility of your structure can be achieved by using steel structure and reduce the site time right so the number of hours spending in the site will be less so compared to your concrete and steel structures your concrete structure will be very massive based on the type of load and based on the span it is going to support the same structure can be used uh, the same uh, load and the same span if you are employing in a steel structure you can achieve a very smaller dimensions uh, of columns and beams so if your column sizes are getting smaller you can achieve a uh, very big carpet area right even nowadays you may uh, you may aware of that your residential uh, the real estate people for one square feet not less than uh, 4000 rupees they are charging right so if it in case of a steel structure your carpet area will be more you can have a more utility space and large column free space this large column free space means the span you no need of any having hindrance so like in your party halls or your uh, auditorium so where you are having a mass people without any hindrance they want to uh, see the presentation by the time you can employ the Uh, steel structures with a large column free space okay. though in concrete we do have grid beams and all without uh, any sub, uh, support intermediate we do have in concrete also uh, grid beam structure is available but compared to your cost and uh, working man hours your steel structures are most effective and less material handling at site like your shattering your reinforcements everything need to take care and the connections everything has to be Uh, kept in sight and the machinery is all but for steel structures just the welding people is sufficient to erect the structure and if it is a big structure a crane is needed that's all so only uh, the less material will be used at the site and compared to your concrete the very important property of steel is ductility so ductility is ability to uh, bend or uh, ability to ex- elongation and all so the better ductility you can achieve in steel structure right and uh, superior lateral load resistance so your lateral load from your earthquake and your wind load are the two kinds of lateral load compared to your concrete your steel structures will have a very good resistance to the lateral load so for these are the reasons you can um suggest steel structures for a building these steel structures do have some disadvantages because not like a, a concrete structure a mason mason can't do this type of steel structure we need a very skilled labor uh, because the precision is more important in steel structure compared to concrete imagine you are laying a concrete floor right so in this concrete floor if your uh, level is uh, increased by 100 mm or if your level is reduced by 100 mm or 1 cm what you will do we can't uh, maintain the precision in concrete structure if there is a, a precision is there if we need to maintain the same level or if any site person did a mistake to uh, in maintaining the level we can easily uh, repair that you can chip off or if a level is less you can fill off and you can maintain the structure but in case of steel structure that is not the case if the precision is missed then everything gets collapsed because your steel beams and steel columns have to come and join together if that 1 mm or that 100 mm is missed out then the proper connectivity will not be achieved so for this condition we need a red site and high precision and uh, need to be maintained at the erection stage and high we need uh, employment of concrete and compared to your uh, sorry you need a employment of your crane and compared to your concrete your erection cost will be higher and the weight of steel will be higher uh, your cost of concrete is as per uh, today market rate for 1 meter cube it is 5200 rupees but in case of steel 1 ton steel is around 40000 rupees so the cost of construction material wise and the technology wise it is higher and compared to your concrete it is very poor in fire resistance it can't uh, 
this is pure fire because it is it is a metal directly exposed to fire means it will get melt so these are the disadvantages of steel spectra and now we know to need to know the properties of steel why uh, in by what property your steel is uh, behaving good to resist the loads and used for long spans and better ductility and better resistance to later loads so you feel it's basically it's an alloy of iron and carbon so the main uh, material which is changing the property of steel is carbon iron is an ore right iron is a basic material like uh, your gold pure gold can't be used right uh, your pure gold cannot be made into a jewelry or orna ornament we need to uh, add copper to that so that you can get good design like that your uh, steel has to be uh, manufactured in such a way that a proper amount of carbon should be added to the iron so if there is no carbon or if you are having a less percentage of carbon that is 0.1 percentage of carbon or no carbon means then it your iron is your raw iron that is pure form of iron nothing else is added so your pure form of iron is raw iron or then raw iron it don't have any uh, uh, since it is very pure it cannot be directly employed to structure to take the load so your carbon percentage should be in such a way that it should enhance your hardness your strength strength your ductility and impact strength also so if your carbon percentage is increased your hardness of your steel will get increased and if you are having less carbon percentage you can achieve higher ductility and higher uh, sorry if your carbon percentage is reduced you will be getting lesser ductility and lesser impact strength so pure form of iron is your wrought iron and cast iron is the one in which your uh, carbon percentage will be more than 2% so whatever the steel we are using is your low carbon steel or mild steel so first is the two forms of iron wrought iron and cast iron and next we are going to see the steel uh, availability so low carbon steel high carbon steel and stainless steel so stainless steel is the one that, which one we are using for your utensils that is it will be a combination of carbon nickel and chromium but high strength carbon steel is the one which is having a carbon percentage of 0.6 to 2% low carbon steel is the one which is having a carbon percentage of 0.15 to 0.3 percent so what you are, the steel what you are using for your structures is your mild steel in which your carbon percentage is controlled so here how the carbon is contributing so the carbon molecule right so initially it was the uh, the ion the flow of molecules will be as per the molecular arrangement of your uh, ion So, if your carbon is added, this carbon uh, molecules it gets into the ion molecules and it will distract the ductility. So, when you are increasing the carbon, more molecules will be get into the ion uh, part and spaces. It will fill the spaces and it will hinder the ductility. So, if you are increasing the carbon percentage, you will be getting a lesser ductility. so your carbon in steel will be contributing 2.1% of its total weight so uh, it's one of the major uh, even though it is the smaller percentage is added 0.3% it's the maximum percentage of carbon in your steel it will contribute 2.1% of weight right so if you are this uh, picture uh, shows you the Uh, how the steels are being manufactured so here in market you can get hot rolled steel sections and pole form steel sections what is it hot roll and cold roll so this hot roll is everything is based on the manufacturing process only nothing do after that manufacturing only that manufacturing process in the manufacturing process uh, here these are the two uh, rolls or drums you can say here your iron or the steel metal is in the molten stage so the proper temperature should be maintained 
so that at, at higher temperature what the temperature means the temperature should be the uh, above this crystallization temperature crystallization means in your uh, fridge you will be keeping your uh, water before getting ice it will form some crystal right the temperature at which your water is forming a crystal that is the crystalline temperature so here your hot uh, roll section section here you can see the molecular arrangement so the proper temperature should be arranged so the metal is passed through two rolls these are the two rolls uh, this will be rotating in the opposite direction but at the uniform speed both should be rotating in the opposite direction at uniform uh, speed so the temperature maintained is above the crystallization temperature so once the material passed through it's coming out of this uh, rolled uh, roller what it will do here the uh, grains or the iron molecules get elongated you can see the structure here the iron molecules get elongated in the direction of rolling so here whatever may be the size here you can achieve the reduction in size whatever the material uh, thickness you want you can achieve a heavy reduction in size uh, after a hot roll section you can see the finishing of your hot roll section the edges will be blunt they are not so sharp they are blunt and the surface is also uh, very rough and is not very pleasant to view coming to your cold form section these cold form sections uh, are already it is hot rolled okay just hot rolled these hot rolled sections are made to cool at room temperature so it will be cool after that those metals will be passed to these rollers here also the same case at the same speed the rollers are made to rotate in the opposite directions here you can pass on pass your metal here also the elongation of your uh, steel plate is taking place here what the difference means here the metal is already uh, cooled right so when it is subjected to a roller again the polishing of your material can take place hope you might have done in your uh, mechanical laboratory right lathe in your first year you might have done so uh, using a lathe you can reduce the cross sections of the bars and all so similar the same concept is here uh, the steel plate has been rolled in between the rollers so that whatever the cross section you want to achieve you can reduce you can uh, set the rollers so that you can achieve the cross section right so here the temperature maintained is below the recrystallization temperature so previously hot roll sections are again smoothened in this uh, cold roll section so that you can uh, you can compare the specimens out of the cold form and hot roll here the surfaces are very sharp and good finish is there and like a grease how we are applying a grease or oil you will be having a shining uh, finish right so like that you can get a cold form section so now we have uh, uh, seen this uh, manufacturing of your uh, hot rolled and cold uh, cold form steel sections so compared to your steel structures you might have uh, deal uh, steels with a two format right the steel which one is your reinforcing uh, steel which will be used in your uh, concrete structures and one more thing is your structural steel which are purely employed in your structural uh, uh, sorry steel structures only no more concrete coverings will be there here only this uh, in this reinforcing steel these are uh, properly covered by your concrete structures like a beam column and all you'll be having reinforcements ties links and all right so come when you are comparing your reinforcing steel and uh, the structural steel right so material wise you'll your uh, reinforcing steel will have more ductility compared to your structural steel then so only it is employed for concrete structure and this is very good in tension also so since concrete is weak in tension these reinforcing steels are being employed in concrete structure to have more ductility and to take care of uh, tension uh, structural elements then but compared to your corrosion effect your steel structures are more prone to corrosion because it is directly exposed to temperature or the environment so whether it may be a chemical attack or a hot temperature or your structure may be near a seashore area so severe environmental conditions will affect your 
uh, structural steel in terms of your corrosion. The corrosion rate will be high. But in this reinforcing steel, it is uh, very well packed in your concrete and proper cover will be maintained. If cover is not maintained, then this steel also will be subject to corrosion. Yes. And uh, if reinforcing steel is used, you need a proper foundation for this uh, structures which are using reinforcing steel. Of course, right? For your normal con uh, constructing of a 1 BHK building or just a building made of concrete structures, you need a foundation and your columns, beams, everything is there. But in case of structural steel, no robust or not a very big foundation is required. Only thing is the base plate is the one which is going to transfer your superstructure load to the foundation structure. So the base plate has to be designed in such a way that it has to withstand the uplift load and all the service loads it has to withstand. So not like your reinforcing steel, a very robust foundation is required. A minor foundation is uh, suggested for your steel structure. And one more uh, advantage of your uh, uh, structural steel is if there is any defectors there, you can uh, easily, it is easily visible, right? You can easily find that uh, defect and you can uh, repair that. So maintenance of the structural steel is very easy. Even though in a severe environmental condition, if any of the column is getting defected or getting weak, you can just balance the structure for a day and you can reinstall a new column here. Right? So within a day, you can your entire structure can be regained its original strength. But in case of reinforcing steel, since it is closely packed inside the concrete, we could not identify the defects uh, with our with our naked eye. So what we have to do, we need to employ your entity techniques. If the entity technique is showing your uh, reinforcement, reinforcement conditions, reinforcement locations and your corrosions, we are having your cover meter, um, rebar locator, all those are the entity techniques, UPV. So using that only we can identify the de defect, not to the structural steel. Even though we identify the defect, we need to break the structure and we need to uh, apply the uh, repair effects and your retrofitting has to be done in your reinforcing steel. But in case of structural steel, we, uh, everything can be done at a quicker moment of time. So this reinforcing steel, you can uh, get in terms of uh, hot roll deform bars, mild steel plain bars. These are your mild steel plain bars. And this is your hot roll deform bar. So it will be having some grooves, right? This deformations will be there so that it will be having better bond strength between your concrete and uh, steel. So for this only your bars are having these uh, grips to have a better grip. And you are having a pre-stressed steel like tendons. So your reinforcement bars are clumped together to form a tendon similar to this picture. So the grades of steel, uh, reinforcing steel available is your FP250, 415, 500 and 550. So in olden days, they have used only this FP250. Just a decade before, we, are, we were using FP4 and 5. But as of now, as per the industry, now we are switched on to 500. But for high-rise stretches, we are going 550. And uh, now it is emerging. FP600 is also coming to the market. Right? So because your uh, uh, need is more, we need to... Uh, employ steel, uh, employ the structures for uh, heavy loads and high rise structures. So, based on the need, your innovations are being uh, So, FP500 is also available in market. And next is your structural steel, that is our major uh, part of your <coughs> concentration. This is one of the very flexible and resilient material for your uh, frames. Frames are nothing but your just two columns and a beam called as a Frame, how your photo frame will be calling your photo frame will be having four sides, right? But your construction frame will be having just three sides, two columns supported with one B. That is called as a frame. So this structural steel are available in market in your eye sections, hollow sections, channel, angles, and plates. So based on the need, based on the need, your you can employ the uh, sections, whatever we want, eye section or hollow sections or all. So this I section is one of the very, uh, it is called as a universal beam, universal beam. So it can be employed as a girder or a, that is a deep beam or you can use it for a uh, 
uh, normal beam so i section and hollow section this hollow sections are mainly used in the construction of your trusses so box section you can have or hollow circular tube also we can achieve in the structural tube and channel it is called as a universal column universal column b for the they'll be using channel for the uh, column structure so in case of uh, concrete structure all your beam your uh, column everything is having uh, having concrete with a steel reinforcement embedded in this here uh, because your i section everyone is having a unique property in uh, uh, resisting the load so i section is better than taking your uh, transverse load so your i section can be employed as a beam your channel can be employed as a column and these angles are being used in your trusses your hollow sections angles are used in trusses and plates this plates are mainly uh, employed in your peb structure that is pre engineered building structure so everything is based on your design so based on the client requirement and for your structural requirement which section is uh, suitable for your structure we have to suggest that so this is a uh, mechanical properties of structural steel available in market similar to your reinforcement reinforcing steel that is fe250 fe500 here also we are having a structural steel fe410 fe450 and all so here this 410 440 490 these are your ultimate tensile strength of your uh structural steel like in concrete m20 m30 and all what is it number 30 25 are the compressive strength of concrete right here this fe410 410 44 and all the ultimate tensile strength or stress or tensile strength of your structural steel and your fe4 and 5 here these numbers represent the ultimate uh yield strength of your uh, reinforcing steel so this is your real strength and here is your ultimate strength and here also based on the gray you can see the percentage of elongation percentage of elongation is similar uh, related to your ductility criteria ductility in, in how much it can be elongated or how much it can be uh, deflected so the percentage of elongation is getting reduced when you are going for a higher grade so if you want a very stiff and stubborn or a robust structure we have to go for a higher grade of steel which is having a very less uh, percentage of elongation that is 20. And this is your permissible stress in your steel members. This is the uh, allowable stress, right? Permissible stress is your allowable stress that has to be employed on a steel structure. So axial ten tension, axial compression, so this 0.6 FY, 0.6 uh, if for the factor of safety, they are following this 1.6 term. This is based on the type of material. So based on the permissible uh, stress and steel structure can carry. So if you are uh, using a channel, we need to consider this axial. Uh, sorry, if you are using a I I section, the I section is best chosen chosen for a beam. So for that, we have to uh, use for factor of safety of 1.67 so bending tension also for bending tension we need to take 1.515 and for a channel section when you are taking for a channel section channel section we are suggesting for columns so columns means the axial compression the factor of safety what we have to use 1.67 right? and for compression also 1.56 then it is for a shear strip again for a i section when you are going for a shear you have to maintain a factor of safety of 2.5, 1.3. So what is this factor of safety? Why we are going to do this? Or why we need to follow this? Right? So imagine you are going for a tour or an ex. Your parents will be giving some money right, to uh, use it for that too. They will be giving some ex. Also. In case of emergency, have this. right? You might have experienced that. So for an emergency case, you will be having some um, extra money they will give. So that extra here is your factor of safety. In case of any accidental loads, unexpected loads has to be your structure has to face by the time while you are designing. If you are designing for an exact load, right? One times, what is the load coming? That one you are going to use for a structure. Means 
then your structure will be under risk risk in the sense it is it will not able to carry the unexpected loads if a sudden you are using a residential building if you are going to uh, employ the same uh, residential building for a commercial means commercial means you'll be getting more loads right if you are exactly the designing for whatever the loads coming on a residential building it cannot be used for a commercial because one time of load only you have applied so that case only we are using a load uh, factors of 1.5 so the load factor is also the separately uh, we need to follow and here it's a factor of safety for material for steel we'll be having this material 1.515 or 1.15 is for steel so that 1.15 is for your reinforcing steel but for the structural steel we need to follow the factor of safety as 1.67 1.515 so this hope you know the importance of your factor of safety this factor of safety has to be used for both material and also for loads okay because why we are using for material load we have understood right for unexpected load condition we need to use the factor of safety for load but for material because in the manufacturing stage what are all the defects might be there in order to take care of that we are using the material factor of safety and this structural steel where and all you can use high rise building and for your industrial structures bridges mining industry and ship building so high rise buildings why can't we use for a low rise building or a 2 bhk or 1 bhk and all still in japan in japan mostly they'll be going for a wooden structures and also for steel structures because light weight steel structures can be manufactured even and it is also good at uh, resisting the lateral loads so lightweight uh, steels are being used but in india we are not following uh, steel for a uh, residential building and all but we are going for a commercial buildings just for a workshop and for a stadium and uh, indoor stadiums mostly we are going for a uh, steel structure so high rise building uh, you, you can achieve the faster construction at a very lesser time so your application of steel finds uh, its utilization in high rise buildings and in bridges so to take care of your long span right uh, long span bridges can be constructed by means of this uh, steel structure and mining industry and ship building these are all your applications of your structural steel so in industrial structures not only your uh, based on your functions only your in, uh, structures are being classified as your residential industrial commercial uh, public buildings and all right so here why your steel is being recommended to your industrial building so here in the previous case we can see your high rise buildings to withstand your uh, lateral loads and industry you can have a very uh, ready made structures can be uh, ready made sections are available so quicker erection and quicker function of that building also can be achieved so why we are specifically mentioning uh, steel as a uh, material for suggested for industrial structure means the main factor is your the strength to weight ratio strength divided by weight okay strength to weight ratio is very high for your industrial uh, sorry high for your steel structure so this because of its very high strength to weight ratio it can uh, span a very uh, it can span very large it can support a very large span and it is uh, durable and it can withstand your later loads also so for this uh, main one point is your high strength to weight ratio this this point we need to keep in mind for this purpose your industrial structures are uh, very well uh, uh, suggesting your steel structures for its utility right most of your uh, steel structures you might have seen it is having a combo of your triangle right here in this picture also you can see uh, more triangles and in your uh, childhood onwards you, you might have seen if you are drawing a house first you will be drawing a triangle right so what is the purpose of triangle and what are the importance of your triangle so triangle is a very three noded basic element a basic 2d element right so compared to your four noded structures your rectangle uh, your square parallelogram or quadrilateral or a polygon 
So compared to your more than uh, four noded elements, your triangle is uh, the three noded element is very much stable geometrically. Right? Hope you might have uh, seen in your uh, human pyramid during your Republic Day or Independence Day or any Vistara Day. Uh, you might have seen here this uh, people will be in uh, supporting. The way by means uh, in standard ease position only, right? Because that is the one of the better uh, position, like the standard ease two legs uh, kept apart. Here, your uh, low transformation will be easier. Right? Even though here, if any one person is tilted, right, and uh, they are changing the direction, or while this bike they are moving over a curve, surely they may deflect, right? They can move apart. But because of their connection, because of their connection, they are uh, stubbornly they will be fitting to this uh, two wheelers, even though they have moved. The low transformation will be safe, so that for easier and uniform low transformation, this triangle element is being suggested. And for a long span, here you can see, right? How much long span? Uh, in order to support a load for a longer span and for uniform distribution of a load, here your triangular uh, elements are being uh, suggested for the uh, structure. So the same concept. Hope you might have understand the uh, importance of your triangle. Even if you are able to lift a load, right? If anyone is, you are going to lift a load, anything, you won't be in atten uh, attention position, right? You'll be stepping up your uh, step step apart your leg in a standard position. You'll be able to lift your load on your head, or if you're going to pull your load. So anyway, this triangle portion plays a major role in form of uniform load transformation and for long span structure. This is the importance of your uh, triangle. So the same triangle concept is being used in the trusses. So this truss is one of the structure which is uh, consists of uh, uh, organized triangle, right? Not an unorganized. It's an organized triangle uh, which will be connected. So all the triangles are interconnected over here. So this interconnections, you can see the span. How much, how longer uninterrupted span? So this much area you can use a big a truck can move inside uninterrupted span. So the same uh, structure can be suggested for an auditorium or a stadium. So the long uninterrupted uh, long span uninterrupted structure can be achieved by means by employing the triangular concept in your trusses. Right? So the overall assemble uh, this. Small individual triangles overall assembly um, behaves as a single object in transferring the loads. So this uh, trusses are being employed in your bridges and for uh, roofs. So long span means obviously your bridges will come into picture, and also the roof, similar to this picture, and for towers, your transmission line towers. Uh, electricity towers, power transmission and communication towers or everything are based on the uh, this same triangular concept being followed in the truss. So, so we can achieve longer span and using the lightweight material we can um, achieve the structure. So, the total weight of the structure will be reduced. So, if the entire truss weight is less, obviously your supporting column weight will also be less. If the total weight of the structure is less, you can have a very minimum foundation for this type of structure. Okay. And here, your deflection will also be reduced. How in your previous uh, picture you can see, if anyone is uh, uh, leaning towards one side, the other person can try to make them balance here. Similarly, your, your deflection will be reduced because if any load, unexpected load is also coming, this, due to this nodal arrangement, this triangular nodal arrangement, your uh, loads will be distributed uniformly. It will be spreaded 
right because it is having a like a two legs here so here in, in this portion we can have a uh, around five members uh, in the connection yes four members in this connection at this joint so the total load will be spread out by the four members again it will be uh, spreaded over to the column in case of concrete structure your load transformation is from the slab to be beam to column column to your foundation and then to the soil here the entire system these uh, members right the slanting members will be acting as a, a low transformation system so this same can be uh, transferring the load to your uh, column through the nose and then to the foundation so reduce the deflection and support it can support heavy loads also right through this uh, mechanism the triangular mechanism it can able to support heavy loads for this only your trusses are being employed in bridges and also in towers and roofs so the web of your triangle the web arrangement right your trusses are like a web like spider web your trusses are like a web uh, so this web of triangles will enable the even uh, even distribution of your load and it can handle your uh, tension load compression load without bending without bending and shearing effect so if here we are seeing right reduced deflection so without bending it can able to take care of the tension and compression loads coming on to the structure here is your truss geometry so even though it is a rectangular structure it is having inner small small rectangles those rectangles are again divided by the slanting member so that it can form a triangle so truss mostly in any of the trusses we just see the individual element is a triangle So now you know the importance of your triangle and the truss geometry. So this is your, your web of triangle or a combination of triangles. Here this is this member, the bottom most member which is uh, supporting, yes, right? That is called as your uh, bottom core. This is called bottom core. And here these two members, this is called as your top core. So this top core is usually Mom. under. Ma'am, yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am, ma can you just give a minute break, ma'am? Your power is off. Just a minute, ma'am. Okay. okay. Yes, ma'am. You can join. You can chat, ma'am. So here, this is your bottom most member that is called as bottom part, and rectangular form of truss. You can have this as a bottom part. So the, usually, if you are applying load over uh, this truss, right? So the top members will always in compression because it is directly taking the Load, so this it will be under compression. So to take care of the compressor load, this bottom cord will deflect, or it has to be under tension to withstand those compressive loads. 
to the same structural seal both will be acting as a tension member and compression member so but in case of rcc with your concrete will be good at taking compressive loads and your reinforcing seal is taking the tensile load right so here your top top cord the top cord will be under compression and your bottom cord will be under tension these individual planting elements and this vertical members these are called as bracing right so these bracing or the one which will be support your top cord and bottom cord here based on the type of load and to keep the system under stability or under equilibrium the elements will be in tension or in compression hope you might have studied your metro joints and metro sections in your structural analysis what are the members which will be taking a tensile load and compressive load so your truss can be divided into two shapes just with the pitched roof or a parallel cord roof parallel cord roof is your top cord and bottom cord will be parallel to each other so your inner bracing will be vertical and slanting and your pitched roof it pitched roof means it is a slope here you can have a both side slope structure one side slope you, you might have seen in shed right in many of the houses outside they might have uh, laid this just to uh, cover your veranda part and all only half slope will be there so that is half slope uh, or pitched one side pitched roof this is double side pitched or it is a uh, parallel cord roof so where your pitched roof is or pitched truss is uh, suggested in case of supporting the roofs so to span the long uh, to support the longer span and to take care of the roof material your pitched roof trusses are being used your parallel cord trusses are being used to support the floors floor slabs on that right here uh, this can be act as a floor slab or in case of bridges in case of a bridge the same structure can act as a deck slab over this your vehicles can move so the same uh, truss by changing the geometry it can be employed for different utility again one more type of truss that is the pratt truss pratt truss here you can see the real uh, pad truss uh, employed in a structure so here it's one of the parallel cord truss your bottom and top members are uh, parallel and your bracing here this type of arrangement is used to take care of your gravity load gravity load means downward direction loads which are acting uh, downward so uh, uh, to take care of the downward load here you can see the arrangement of your truss your load is in the down the downward direction so that it has to withstand that downward deflection for that it is supporting like a uh, n the pratt truss is another another name you can call it as a n type of truss because you can see the n yeah right and the same pratt truss by changing the small arrangement of your uh, bracing elements in a opposite way here you can see towards the right Uh, right planting line, right in your uh, kids, you might have uh, kindergarten, you might have studied this right side. If it is planting, all the bracing are right side, and here you are having the left side. So by changing the bracing system, here you can achieve the uh, same type of truss can be employed to take care of your uplift load. Uplift load means like uh, to support your uh, transmission line towers. Uh, So this transmission line towers are subjected to wind loads and later loads. Mostly, these wind loads are having the pulling out of the structure, like how cyclone, how your trees are being pulled out. So that is the pulling effect or less or uplift effect, right? So these uplift loads can be caused due to the wind over the structure, or due to the soil condition, poor soil condition, or due to the water. If you are having water table beneath your foundation and all, by the time you will be facing the uplift loads. But in case of steel structure, your uplift loads are mainly the wind loads. So wind will try to pull out your structure. Yeah, and that kind of scenario will be employing 
the same fraud trust in a different fashion. Right? So this fraud trust can be employed for a longer span. Uh, just 20 meter from 20 meter to 100 meter span you can use this frag truss and here's your north light roof truss so north light roof truss means here you can see the cartoonic uh, picture of this north direction so here this window is there right here you'll be having a glass so that your uh, Sunlight will be penetrating to the glass so that we know no need of having additional uh, lighting equipment over inside the working space or the working area. And here also the same triangle concept is being used. But here we are employing a glass window so that for the penetration of light. So the long span when it is co fully covered we need to use a uh, artificial lighting inside your uh, factories or industry. So to avoid the, to minimize the usage of electricity and to increase the usage of your natural resources, here your windows are being, uh, your roofs are being fitted with this window. This is called as your north light roof truss. So these are your uh, connections, right? How your truss is being, your bracings are connected to your bottom cord and top cord through the gusset plate. Your gusset plate. So here, this bottom part can be an angle or an I section because I section is good for B, and this can be a channel, and this can be a plate or an angular element, and your bracings can also be a plate or angle section. So this is your king post roof truss. So the king post roof truss is the one. Uh, which will be having a central uh, tie member. Central cord will be there. Here you will be having a bottom cord, top cord, and that the central cord will be there. And we have uh, diagonal elements called as your struts or ties. So here your struts are there. So the central element is called as your king post. So the entire truss will be called as a king post roof truss. So this up to uh, 8 meter span. So for smaller span, you can use this king post uh, roof truss. And here's your support. This support can be made of a concrete column or you can go for a steel column. Here, for your understanding purpose, a wooden truss has, has been shown so over a supported over a concrete column. So here we need to feed to the connection and your tie beam to withstand the load and here over the uh, top card we are having a small small rectangle right those are called as the purlins so the main role of purlins to take care of your uh, roofing roof loadings will be there so your purlins are the one which will be transferring your load effectively to the rafters and then to your bottom card and then to your column so this is called as the principal rafter. Your top cord we have seen, right? So the, your top cord is called as the principal rafter because that is the main thing which is supporting your uh, roofing material and your and that is the one which is uh, going to cover your entire uh, structure today. So this board, principal rafter, this is the at the entrance. Imagine at the entrance. And at the exit, you may have the same type of truss arrangement. So the both the truss can be supported by means of purlins. So the main role of purlins is to support your roofing sheets and the roof load. And here is your queen post truss. The queen post truss is not having the central cord. So your queen post truss will be having a training beam and a cleat. So this is this two uh, structure is called as a queen post truss. The same arrangement. Purlins. Here you can see the number of purlins are are two. So more than eight meters till fifteen meters, you can use this queen post. Truss. So your king post is for up to eight meters. Your queen post is from eight to fifteen meters. You can use this queen post. But your prat truss can be used up to 100 meters. This is the one I have explained to you that is a one, one side pitched roof. 
right so your prat truss is your parallel chord roof truss parallel chord truss and your king post your queen post and your lean to roof or pitched roof truss be pitched means slope slope is available so here a proper slope has to be maintained to drain your uh, rain water or if it is on the snowy area the snow has to automatically fall below the uh, roof so for that purpose we need to maintain a proper slope if you are not maintaining the proper slope what will happen the the load carrying uh, the load will not be distributed properly so uh, in addition to that if your slope is improper or if you are having using higher slope then uh, your member the supporting member has to be uh, bigger the bigger size of your column has to be achieved if your slope is high if your slope is less you can achieve the very less uh, size of your concrete column so for it is for it, uh, just to span a um, just to support a span of uh, 2.4 meters or less than 3 meters we can use this uh, lean to roof truss or a single side pitched roof truss here also the same uh, not like you uh, queen truss or a king post truss here you'll be having only one common rafter which is which will be placed at a proper spacing right proper spacing and over this you'll be having the uh, rafters or the purlins here in the one side roof truss this is called as the batten here you'll be having a e boards these are just to drain your rain water or it will act like a sun shade roof So now we have seen uh, what is the truss and what are the different types of trusses and what are the uh, usage of truss based on your requirement. Now we are going to see your uh, what are the loads that can be coming on your truss. So in your designing your concrete structure itself, you might have come across this uh, IS eight seventy five part one and part two, part three, and part four. So mostly you'll be dealing with IS eight seventy five part one, two, three. right for dead load live load and wind load and for earthquake we will be concentrating on is 1893 2002 so what this 875 part 1 is saying that is your dead load so dead load in case of a truss what are the dead load so dead load is your self weight of your structure mainly first and foremost load is your self weight your structure has to withstand its own weight right If imagine you are uh, walking. If your leg is having an inju injury, you are unable to withstand your own weight, right? You need a support. So for that, you have to be strong enough, and you have to be strengthen yourself, or the injury has to be cured. So like that, first and foremost thing is your structure has to withstand its own weight. So based on the type of material you are using for the structure, your self weight will be varying. So based on the unit weight of the material, so concrete means so unit weight is twenty five. Like that, your based on the unit weight of the material, your self weight of the structure may vary. How the unit weight is vary based on the type of material. So what material you are using? So for the truss, if you are using the steel structures, so the steel weight, the total weight of the member has to be taken into account. So how many members and what are the sizes? So that multiplied by the unit weight will give you the uh, self weight of the structure. And apart from this, what are the dead loads can be added? So uh, dead loads may be your uh, in case of a concrete structure, you may have a wall. Wall will be there or any furniture like a superimposed loads will be there. Here also we do have uh, uh, dead loads like uh, fittings, your electrical fittings. and your uh, plumbing fittings those are all or your hvac those are all your dead uh, will be acting on a trusses we need to consider as a dead load on your truss and imposed loads so imposed loads is your live loads and crane loads so live loads for maintenance people may uh, uh, climb over the truss and may repair uh, repair work may be done so for that a minimum uh, live load has to be Imposed to your structure and crane load. The crane load will be moving, right? Your live loads are not stable, but your dead loads will be stable. Your live loads are keep on moving. 
in case of an industry or in case of a workshop it may have a uh, crane so crane will be moving here and there to lift the material so the crane load will also be come under your live load right and the next important load which plays a major criteria in case of a steel structure is your wind load in case of your concrete structure your dead load 1.5 times of dead load and 1.5 times of uh, live load is the major uh, criteria for a uh, normal structure in case of high rise we will be going for a, a later load combination but in case of steel the very worst condition uh, factor of safety we have told right worst condition in case of emergency it may hit your wind load is the worst case so for extra care has to be taken while calculating the wind load and while designing a structure for wind load we might we should have an eye on the wind load combination even though your loads are less on wind we need to uh, go for a different combination right combinations i'll be explaining in the uh, upcoming slide so wind load so wind load uh, your dead loads and live loads are uh, like gravity it will be acting in the uh, gravity direction that is downward but your wind load it will be it may hit your building in any direction so it's a lateral load but major it is showing effect on the lateral direction so wind load is one kind of lateral load and snow load so in uh, snow region your roofs has to be designed in such a way that proper slope should be maintained so that the snow has to fall off easily as on it or as of its own otherwise we need to uh, clean uh, the snow proper uh, properly so the snow load has to be taken into account and temperature hydrostatic and soil uh, soil pressure soil pressure is your uh, based on the bearing capacity of your soil it will be exerting some pressure on your structure so that soil pressure has to be taken into account not for the trusses but for the supporting uh, structure for your truss so because on your truss you'll be having the dead load impost load wind load and snow load but the hydrostatic and your soil pressure and all it will be coming from the uh, uh, foundation condition for it right and accidental load impact load and in case of sudden explosion so these are all the uh, loads to be considered while designing your truss and also your earthquake load it's again one of the later low so mostly for a high rise buildings and important structure like bridges and chimneys and towers surely we need to take care of your earthquake load not for a small workshop buildings or for uh, small structures uh, it's a uh, it's of very less important and the erection load so this erection load uh, because a crane may lift your uh, truss right your crane hook capacity you might know so that while lift that crane uh, while lifting that uh, uh, structure using a hook it has to your structure has to withstand the uh, crane lifting capacity if your structure is weak if your member is weak then again uh, your uh, member will get broken before uh, the erection stage itself so that we need while designing itself we have to leave uh, a point for the uh, erection we need to consider the erection loads also and we need to mention only at this point your crane has to be hooked right so the hooking position hook location we need to uh, show it in our design itself so that while erection the site people may uh, concentrate on that erection point and may, they may lift the uh, crane using that uh, location so the erection load is one of the main criteria in case of designing the load and so the wind load uh, the dead load and live load we have uh, seen and the major effect is your wind load so here one of the truss your hoe truss or a pink truss has been shown here how your wind is getting uh, on this uh, truss here imagine you are having a co column and a beam over this you are supporting a truss here your wind is a it can hit your building in any direction but our worst condition we need to check for all the direction so first x x y and z 
so y is the vertical direction x and z are the horizontal lateral direction right so wind once your wind is hitting your building it may cause an internal pressure inside your building why because your building may have opening your building may have opening windows will be there right doors will be there through that your wind enter and it will create a internal pressure if this side is having a very less opening what will happen your wind try to move upwards it will try to move upwards and it it will try to push over your truss this is called as your suction pressure this is the internal pressure and this which one is coming out of the structure this is called as a suction this is the main uh, dangerous effect of while designing your truss so the suction pressure needs to be uh, taken into account and it, we need to pay more attention while calculating the suction pressure and while designing your truss you are see to that you are satisfying the suction pressure also here you can see the one more effect of your wind here in this direction you can see uh, openings are there right window openings are there here it is a solid wall so if your wind may have based on the slope of your structure based on the ar uh, arrangement of your truss it may move like this also right but if your openings are very less in this side surely your internal pressure will build up and it will tend to push your uh, roof truss above so even though because your roof trusses are very light thin material like a sheet right you might have seen your aluminum sheet <coughs> will be used for this uh, roof truss so this uh, light weight sheet could not withstand your internal pressure so it will be tend to uplift by the effect of wind so we need to consider this suction pressure also and so what we need to do so your proper connection should be uh, safer for this load combination we need to check uh, twice before entering into the design right. so your wind calculation since it is uh, one of the major designing criteria uh, wind calculation is uh, clearly uh, we want an uh, elaborate explanation of your wind load calculation so Uh, like uh, for your exams, what you are going to refer your IS 875, it is being practiced in uh, industry also, right? We do have IS 875 practices. So as per Indian standards, we need to do the design. So the first we need to calculate what is the basic wind speed of your uh, basic wind speed to be calculated for your structure. So here your basic wind speed can be. 55 15 in terms of meter per second it is mentioned in your is code so if it is 55 and above it will be under zone 1 50 it is zone 2 like that you are having the zonal arrangement for your wind calculation so our chennai comes under zone 2 50 which we are having the basic wind speed of 50 so today we might have experienced this due to the bad weather right So here the day, uh, design wind speed it is calculated in terms of or wind velocity you can calculate in terms of meter per second here uh, it is equal to vb into k1 into k2 into k3 vb is your basic uh, wind speed and k1 that is your probability factor what is the probability factor that one you can be uh, referred in your table so in this probability factor what are the thing we need to concentrate so the mean probable design life of the structure we need to take into account that is how much how long your structure is going to uh, exist so if it may be an important structure so it can it is a temporary structure so that no need to design for a 50 years and uh, 100 years and all just for 5 years you can uh, use the life of the structure so based on the importance of the building so for temporary sheds and for wall work and boundary walls and all you can use 5 uh, years of uh, life and for buildings and structures which is having a, a, 
uh, residential building sorry not other than the uh, residential buildings you will be having a farm works uh, farm house will be there right wooden farm house will be there those only you can consider for uh, 25 years and for important uh, structures like your uh, communication towers power plants uh, those only you can consider for 100 years of a life structure but while designing whether they are going to uh, use it for 5 years or 10 years normally uh, we will be designing for a 50 years of life span so you are considering your building is going to exist for a 50 years of life span likewise we are the similar life span is considering for concrete structures also right so this uh, k1 k1 is your probability factor so probability means how long your structure is going to exist so this k1 is again based on your basic wind speed so if your wind speed is 50 for a general building with a life span of 50 years your k1 is also 1 so from uh, 1 to 1.08 your k1 factor will be vary so based on the life span of the structure your k1 factor will vary based on the life span and based on the wind speed your k1 uh, factor varies from uh, 0.7 to 1.08 and next is your uh, k2 k2 is your terrain uh, factor or, uh, or on uh, on which uh, location and what are the landscapes available around your structure based on that your k2 factor is being uh, designed so why we need to include this all factors on all uh, because your structure alone is not going to stand in and around your structure you may have a hindrance another tall buildings may there you may have mountain or a tree so if any hindrance is there your structure will not be affected because uh, over that uh, your if you are having a tall structure nearby your that tall structure itself will take care of the wind load if your structure is small then it's not a, going to have a big effect and uh, if you are having a very mountainous region or if you are having a very plain open land So in open land, your wind effect will be more. Right? So based on the terrain category and based on the height of the structure and based on the size and orientation of the structure, we need to take care of the uh, K2. So so the K2 is uh, uh, mainly the design wind speed variation with respect to the uh, terrain. So in your IS code IS 875, we are having a terrain category of one, two, three, and four. based on the class of the building class a class a b c d and e right. and next is your k3 that is your topography back, uh, factor that is the basic wind speed again so the topography where your building is being located whether it's near a hill or a valley or any ridges between so so if it is near a hill your uh, Wind may hit the hill and it will revert back. So those load combinations also we need to take into account. And these load classes and uh, the tables are being given in your IS 875 class 5.3. So strictly these uh, values of K1, K2, K3 are being followed in industry so that we can get the exact load and all the possible considerations are being taken into account. So. when you are multiplying these three uh, factors along with the basic wind speed we get the design wind speed of that particular building for its location so the total wind speed right so the total wind speed can be calculated uh, using f is equal to cf into ae into p is again this may be you might have find in this is 875 so this cf that is your fourth coefficient of your building and a is the effective frontal area p is the the design wind pressure so this effective frontal area means how much area is subjected to wind pressure in x direction this is imagine this is x direction so this is positive x so how much force is on the positive x if unexpectedly wind is blowing in this opposite direction so what is the it is negative x and for this also the same uh, area has to be projected so how much area is being faced by your building for this wind load that is your uh, ee effective 
frontal area that is your area exposed to wind and p is that is your design wind pressure and p is that is your force coefficient of your building so this force coefficient uh, is being calculated this f is equal to c f a e into p is it this is calculated as a total uh, wind load for a building as a whole as a whole this is the total wind load especially for uh, for roofs and walls in order to take care of the suction pressure right we need to uh, put an extra effort to your walls and roofs so for walls and roofs here you are having the external pressure coefficient cpe and internal pressure coefficient cpi and ap is that uh, that the p is that is your design wind pressure and a is the surface area of your structural element like your effective frontal area how much uh, how much amount of area is exposed to your uh, structure sorry wind and these are all your load combinations only dead load and imposed load these are the types of load combinations you need to take care while designing your roof truss because only dead load alone can be uh, inside a building we do have imposed loads right because we are having live loads on the building we are having uh, uh, cables electric supplies and uh, plumbing accessories on the building so that that load combination has to be taken into account dead load and live load and one more case uh, if dead load if a factory is working or if an industry is functioning by the time you'll be having dead load imposed load and if a sudden uh, wind uh, is coming or if any sudden cyclone is there by the time you'll be having the combination of dead load imposed load and wind load right so your wind and earthquake need not come on a same uh, time right sometimes during night will be having dead loads imposed loads and earthquake load also so at that time during night time if your factory is not having the uh, live load you are not having the person load you will be having only dead loads and wind load alone right so this is a different combination if you are uh, like uh, how to strengthen your structure if if at all the load coming on the structure to be withstand what are all the possible uh, type of load combination has to be designed so that your structure has to withstand those loads so this dead loads and live loads we are a uh, factory is functioning right during uh, night times or during a holiday if your uh, building is being hit by a wind by the time your live load will be absent by dead load and wind load will be there and even though uh, your wind load is not there even though your imposed load is not there but you may have erection load inside operations inside the building due to the direction load so all the possible combination has to be checked mostly we will be having the dead load imposed load and wind load for, uh, or earthquake load this will be the worst case so your structure has to be designed for this worst case so that your all the other combination can also be withstand because this is the higher load uh, combination this will give you the higher load if your structure is being designed for this much uh, higher load surely it can able to withstand the other load because this uh, will be less surely it will be less than this kind of combination so this is your uh, load combination to be used while designing your uh, uh, truss or the structures so dl ll is your dead load live load and if your cl is your strain load so 1.5 times 1.5 times uh, live load this is for the strength and for serviceability usually you will be going for one always your strength criteria you will be having the factor more than one it can be 1.2 or 1.5 but in case of serviceability is that one or much less than one so in case of dead load live load and wind load your uh, uh, load combination will be 1.2 times 1.2 times and your wind load is 0.6 times so you might have asked where i can in if if uh, if my building is hit by another direction opposite direction what you can do but that can be employed by using a negative factor minus point is it direction means 1.5 times of, but no uh, need to enter negative in your dead load and live load because it is always present in your structure in a downward gravity side so 1.2 times plus 1.2 times 
your wing node alone we need to concentrate either positive or negative so plus 0.6 you will get one combination minus 0.6 you will get another combination and dead load wind load and abstract load and dead load live load and accidental load so all these combinations we need to take care of in your design among this which one is giving a higher load for that load we have to design your building these are the deflection limits to be followed for your industrial building so for vertical deflection so for your far lane and all your maximum deflection will be fan by 150 l by d ratio will be uh, calculating right for a concrete structure similarly your fan by 150 and for uh, lateral limit will be having your height your vertical deflection is due vertical deflection will be coming on a horizontal structure like a beam right your beam you will be facing a vertical deflection downwards deflection so by the time you need to include your Fan. fan divided by 150 or fan divided by 180. In case of uh, lateral deflection, means lateral deflection will come over your column, like buckling. So, for to take care of the lateral deflection, we need to employ your height of that element. So, height of your column or height of your crane. So, height divided by 150 or height divided by 250. These are all the Uh, maximum deflection limit to be carried so in uh, today's session we have discussed about uh, your basic introduction of your steel structures your truss uh, how uh, you can identify the difference between your uh, uh, reinforcing steel and structural steel and where you can employ the type of structures and uh, your uh, industrial structures and your basic concept of your truss Your three-noded uh, triangles and the geometry, different types of stresses, and what are the wind effects and load combinations we will be seeing. So that's all for today's session. Um, thank you all so much, and we'll be joining in uh, tomorrow's session. Ruby, ma'am. Ruby, ma'am, can you hear me?